Hello, this is W1REX, Rex, and I got a couple of little things to show you. I'm going to combine these all into one video. Hopefully this will come out just fine. I have here a semi-completed little squall. I have some more parts that I have to put on the board to finish it. Uh, a couple of things. I like to keep my parts on a little piece of anti-static foam. I normally, when I'm building a kit, I will take the parts and sort them once, put them all lined up and ready to go, and then when I go to build, I know exactly where the parts are and I don't have to keep looking for them over and over and over again. So we'll set that aside for a minute and I'll just show you when you've got, I've got a board half done. It's got a lots of different size components on it, but when I go and turn it upside down to do soldering of another component, you can see the board's all wiggly. So you have to have some kind of a convenient way of holding the board. I'm going to show you a few things. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to bring in um, some gadgets. Here is the granddaddy. That's a, uh, a pan of ice with a pan of base on it. Here's a sort of a similar version of it. This is a Dremel device. This is a vacuum vice, which I've had forever. It's got a little vacuum thing on it so you can set it down. This guy has a little slot in the jaw so that you can put boards in and out and very quickly be able to turn it upside down and do stuff. But this is about as wide as it can get. This is a Rockmite board. And that's about as big as you can get inside that guy. Uh, we have one last one. This is a Brink and Cotton. This is also a vacuum vise, but it's also very similar to the Pana vise. These all weigh a ton. They're very heavy, very big, and very clunky. And I have gone through these devices over the years. I've had this Pana vise for probably close to 40 years. Uh, I don't use it much anymore. I don't use the Dremel D vise. I don't use the vacuum vise. Primarily because of a couple of things. This was this is the lowest one to the ground, but that board is four inches up off the ground, up off the top of the bench. And when I'm soldering, that means I'm working up high. My hands, my forearms are all resting on the on my elbows to get up to the right height. And I don't like to work that high. I like to work a little bit lower to the board. So I'm gonna put this aside and bring out the next round of items. We've got the typical thing you see in um, ham fest and stuff. You can buy this board, this uh, gizmo for anywhere from five to ten dollars. You can put the board in the vices. Really doesn't provide a lot of support, but it does work. Uh, we have this is a solder man that I did as a build-a-thon kit at four days in May in 2012. This little guy is a little bit easier to get stuff in and out. And you just basically... Now I see I'm searching for a good spot to put this board because it's been populated so I have to sort of move around a little bit. And that works pretty good. This is only... Yeah, that's only two inches up off the ground or up the bench. Um, we got this other one. This came in from Hendrix QRP kits a long time ago. And you, again, you put the board up in here, uh, tighten it down. And now this thing, if I loosen that up, you can swing the board around. I can swing it back and forth. But again, this one is uh, four and a half inches up off the deck. I don't particularly care for that. So I'm going to put all these guys aside. I don't use those either. And I'm going to now show you the latest thing and I'm, I'm beginning to really get addicted to it. I'm going to set this board off to one side for a minute. Now bring in, this is a part two of my video. A lot of people complain, well not complain, but they say well they don't have a lot of room in that bench. They don't have a, I've, I've got uh, I've got over a hundred foot of bench in my shop here. And I would say a lot of QRPers don't have anywhere near that much bench space. Uh, you're lucky if you get some space on the kitchen table or something of that nature. So I'm going to show you. I got a big Altoids tin and I got a little Zomboids tin. <coughs> and to show you what's going on, I'll open up this guy. And I see I got my piece of foam in there. 
There's a, a couple of, there's a pair of, these are flush cutters, very sharp. Um, um, on one edge is flat, the other edge has got a sharp thing so you can get them right down, you can cut right down to the, to the uh, bottom of the board. A pair of nice needle nose pliers, some solder, solder sucker. This is a, I carry this around. I love this in the field. I, I can build kits in, on picnic benches. I can build them anywhere. Well, this is a little Radio Shack butane fired soldering iron. Very, very cool. A built in little stand. Uh, I love that guy. I have two or three of them. A couple of uh, small screwdrivers, my Leatherman Micra, in case I need to cut something. I'll set that aside. And the most important thing was these, this little thing right here. This is the latest from QRPME. This is called. I call this a brass set. And all we have is four solid brass little cubes. They have slots milled in them with a threaded hole. And I'll build this, these four guys. And the neat thing about these guys is you can just find any space on the board. You slide the slot in there, tighten that up. I'll put one over here. Whoops, I gotta get the slot. Okay, and then I'll put one over here. I only need, when I'm doing a little round tuna can board, I only need three of them for a tripod. I'll set this one aside. Now I can put parts in the board, but as you can see, those threaded thumb screws stand up, so when I set the thing upside down, it sits perfectly flat and the beauty of it is the fact that it's about a one inch off the surface and I can spin this around anywhere I want to get that just magic spot where the the iron and the solder and the parts all line up because a lot of times if you're coming in you want to you want to get just the right angle so you just move it around it's, it's so easy and it's very lightweight and as you can as you saw it's very small so I'll show you the practical use of this. I'm going to put a few parts on here. I'm going to go after this this um, diode up here. So I will bend up a couple of parts. Uh, put that diode right in there. I'm going to finish this area up here where the amplifier is on this little squall. Put that down there. Spread the leads out a little bit. I'll put uh, I'll put in the caps. There's one. There's two. If you want to build a kit quicker, obviously you put three or four parts in there. You don't you don't uh, put one part in and solder in. You put three or four parts in. Generally, one of the problems you have is once you get all those parts and you got all the leads sticking up on the bottom side of the board so you need that need to be able to maneuver around a little bit come on get in there to get that magic spot so if you can see I'm using my bench iron here oh I forgot to show you what's in the zomboids <coughs> that's the brass shavings that that generates a nice clean uh, soldering tip. I'll give it a little bit of tinning action. But you can see right down in here I got this really dense area and the, the beauty of these this brass set is the fact that I can just go in here and I can move it around and get the just the right spot for that one. That one. I can spin it a little bit get another one just right. I'll put that one in. I'll spin it around again. I'll solder this guy. If I was using that panner vise, <laughs> I'd be spinning this thing and it'd, be, it'd weigh a ton. But the other thing is that it's only an inch off the board, so <clears throat> my forearms and even my palm or the side of my hand can, can rest on the bench. And it makes it a little bit easier not carrying all that weight. And I can solder for a lot longer time without getting my arm or hands tired. 
you see I can we I can wend my way in there and I'm moving it around looks to me like one two oh, I forgot this guy here so I'll swing that around and I'll get in there right there so one two three four five six seven eight eight leads soldered cut them off put your finger over the end of the lead so it doesn't go flying very important in places like if you're building a kit in your hotel room at FDIM you don't want all those things going into the carpets some poor, some poor staff will come in after you leave the room and step on one of those things in their stocking feet and they'll get themselves a nice injection of there you go so there's quite a few parts down the down the hatch I'll get a couple more I'll put in these chokes here's a hundred micro Henry now you can set the board down this way you can spin around and take a look find the part here's a micro Henry I'll put it in right here of course once you get that lead in there you can't set it down or else it'll move it around so I'll set it back on on the legs and put a 22 micro Henry which is right here spread those out there's a 33 K resistor that goes in right there We got a 0.1 microfarad cap, which is down in the bottom end of this. This is the final transistor area. Put that in. So now I got another batch of little parts. These are spread out a little bit better, so it's a lot easier to solder. Clean the tip, a little tinning, correct way of soldering. Have a little bit of little dab of solder on the tip. Put it on the part and the pad. Wait for it to flow a little bit. And then add to the, don't add it to the iron, you're adding it to the, the lead or the pad. And that's why you know that you've got the right flow because if you put it on the iron, then of course it's going to instantly melt. But if you put it on the pad, you know that you've got good heat transfer and it's going to go. You can almost, you can almost see the color transition of that solder that's on the that's covering the pad when you know that you can add something and there's one two three four five six seven eight more eight more leads soldered go in cut those off almost done we got one last part for this little scroll to get done got a, a, a sip socket that we're going to cut into three individual sockets to make a socket for that transistor I've got a pair of these are really incredibly cool Stanley made the it's a utility blade in a guillotine style cutter so it cuts perfectly square the only problem is they're hard to find because they discontinued making this tool. I bought this about five, six years ago and I'm lost without it. But it makes very nice square cuts. If I was cutting that with a pair of dikes, uh, a lot of times the plastic would get deformed and you might end up with just the little pin inside and the plastic would take a hike with those guillotine cutters. In this case, I'm going to put these sockets right back on the transistor the leads on the transistor are relatively straight I'll make sure I straighten them up so that when I put it come on okay so that's fairly straight now I can put this transistor on the board emitter is the little pad so in this case I've got to cross it over Come on. This is where it's nice. It's uh, nice to have fingernails when you want to sort of persuade something to go into a saw into a hole. There we go. 
So in this case, I'm going to hold the transistor down with one finger. I'm going to turn my solder into a, like a, almost like a cobra, ready to strike. Now I can clean the tip, a little solder. I can come in here and I'm, the solder is standing up by itself and I can solder one pin, wait for it to cool and double check everything on the front that is standing up. Now I can put it down and finish the other two pads. Okay, wait for that to cool and then I'll do the first one just to make sure I've got a good connection on that. And there you go. You've got build the band module, put in the LM386 and there's a little squall and you can see that if I had to I could have moved these other places on the board but that is how you use a brass set. Very small, very convenient. I sell them four of these cubes machined um, and drilled and tapped with the thumb screws for 20 bucks shipped for free anywhere in the world. So thank you for watching.